So let's start in Romans chapter 6, and I've highlighted some verses, so I'm not going to read them all, because you should have already been reading Romans 6. You should have memorized it by now. Uh, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? What shall we say? That's not what did I say. What shall we say? Shall we go on sinning so grace may increase? No. King James. God forbid. By no means we are those who have died to sin. We are those who have what? What do we die to? How can sin, how can we live in it, sin, any longer? How can we live in it? We're dead to it. All right, so I'm going to read that again. We are those, everybody say, that's essence. Y'all speak country over there? Okay. Y'all speak country over there? Everybody say, essence. We are dead to sin. They talk essence down in Pine Bluff. Uh -huh. Essence. By no means. We are those who have died to sin. Are you those? Are you one of those? So you're dead to sin. So how can you live in it any longer? But how many of you heard people say, Well, you know, we're just sinners. We're just human. Have you heard that? You heard that rumor? Well, let's straighten that one out. How can we be sinners if we're dead to it? I guess you could be a dead sinner. We can assist you on that. It's called water baptism. Hold you down, hold you down, hold you down, hold you down, hold you down until you drown. Okay. Oh, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into death? Let's fast forward to verse number 6. For we know. Everybody say, I know. Now, listen. You may not know, but the Bible said you know. The Bible says, for we know. King James says, knowing this. My paper to story for life of knowledge. If you don't know it, then you don't know it. But it doesn't change the fact that it's there. That it is the truth. So here it is. For we know that our old man or our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin. Everybody can do this. You got a body? How do you feel? Oh, I feel good. I feel good. All right. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we might, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Very interesting. Because anyone who has died, well, who's died? We are those who have. Verse number two. Say, we, that'd be me, I'm of those who have died. For we know that our old self was crucified with Christ, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. I have a little footnote there. It says, be rendered powerless. That was all caps in my notes there. When I touched that F in, it popped up, be rendered powerless. So I had to put the emphasis on it. Be rendered powerless. What's rendered powerless? The body that was ruled by sin. That we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from what? What are we set free from? Who's been set free from sin? Well, who died? Raise your hand if you died. Well, if you died, how'd you raise your hand? Because you've been risen in the life of God, which is a new life. You were in the tree of the first Adam, which its fruits is called not fruit, but works of the flesh. And those who do these will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And you've been now grafted into the life of God, the tree of God. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, and our Father God is the husbandman who causes us to grow and become fruitful. Look at the person beside you and say, My, you look fruity tonight. <laughs> say, I'm the fruit of the womb. Amen. Because anyone who has died has been free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. So are we going to continue our Christian life focusing on being dead or being alive? Does a dead person have a thought? Do they have a choice? But I'm alive. I'm as just alive as I am dead in Christ. So why does the church always talk about how dead they are? They're always talking about the dead man, the former man, the before Christ person. Why? Because, well, in my case, I was almost 21 when I gave my life to Jesus, so I was well-schooled and trained 
in the old man's way of thinking and living. And so that's why I had to be born again, get a new heart. And that's why I had to have my mind transformed because my mind thought that was the way to do it. There's a way that seems right to men, but the ways thereof are death. What's the end of sin? Death. So what must we do? And this, so we're going to work our way over here to, to uh, Romans chapter 7, uh, verse number 20. And then we're going to jump over to chapter 7, and we're going to go all the way through it. Verse number 20, chapter 6. When you were slaves to sin. Anybody here, were you enslaved to sin? I mean, just, you got up in the morning thinking about it. Matter of fact, you started reaching for it first thing in the morning. Baby, you got any? Uh, that's not fair to do that because that was actually an activity, but that doesn't make it sin, does it? Okay, ice cream and pickles, I don't know. What is it that you're addicted to? The words of the singer, I'm addicted to love. I know y'all are thinking, what why was that artist? Uh, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. Ooh. Word study. Everybody ready for word study? Let's look at that word. Actually, it's not a word. You were free in regard to righteousness. Boy, that's a big old Greek word. In a broad sense, the state of him who is as he ought to be, the condition acceptable to God, the doctrine concerning the way in which a man may attain a state of approval of God. I wasn't under that control. I wasn't under that covering. I wasn't under, uh, I saw somebody a while ago and they had an umbrella. I wasn't, I slapped Daniel when he came in and I didn't realize they ran. It was like, it's like a, it was like a, a Gatorade a commercial. I slapped him like that and water went. Because <laughs> he had it all in his shirt. <laughs> when you're under the umbrella, the NIV says the control of righteousness. One translation says in regard to righteousness. Listen, I was, in, I was under the control of a sin nature. So what's the secret? How do I get out of that? That addictive, that addiction, that lust, that, that thing that's contrary to in regard to God's approval. How do I get out of that? I don't even know why I want it. I don't know why I reach for it. I don't know why I crave it. You die. You don't modify. You don't learn how to control the sinful lust. You die. Now, all the funerals I've ever done, nobody's ever asked me for a cigarette or a beer. Or could you bring some women up here? Or uh, could you say some nice words? They've, they've not done anything. They've, they've just very peacefully, for the first time in many, many years, just very peacefully, didn't have anything ugly to say to me or about me. Uh, it doesn't matter what I said. I drop a note in there. I love you. I'm going to miss you. Or thank God and Greyhound you're gone. None of that. They, they're just there. They're just there peaceful. Why? Why? Because they're dead. Not being ugly. Just being factual. They're. That means if you're dead in Christ, I can say all things about you. All kinds of stuff about you. And if you're dead, it don't matter to you. It doesn't make it a fact, does it? Why? Because you're dead. And the life now is the life of God. And in Him now you live and move and have your being. So people can be ugly to you, but that don't make you ugly. People say all kinds of ungodly stuff about you. don't make you ungodly. People can criticize you, put you down. They can do all the stuff that people do. That doesn't make it a fact. It's not going to steal my joy. You know why? Because I'm not just dead. I'm now alive in God. And because I am now a servant of or under the control. I don't really think that's really the best way to interpret it, but I didn't study Greek. In control of righteousness, then I'm going to do what is righteous because God's stamp of approval is on me. Perfect God stamped approval on you. Perfect God. How can He do that and still be perfect? Because you know you're not perfect because I know you've been thinking stuff in here like Lord how long is it going to get us through chapter 7 he's still stuck in 6 
how can a perfect God stamp that approval on me? Because not only does he see you dead, he sees you alive, and he sees you done. Conformed to the image of Jesus. You've been predestined. If we ever get to Romans 8, you've been predestined. You believe in predestined? Yes. You are predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus. So which Jesus? The one on the cross? No, that Jesus died. Which Jesus? The one in the tomb? No, he rose again. Which Jesus? The one that is alive, that is seated at God's right hand, where you and I, with God's approval stamped on us, are seated in him. I'm getting up. I wish I had wheels. <laughs> oh, come on. So let's go now. Were y'all ready now? So let's go to Romans 7. Probably as a chapter, apart from the book of Job, the book of Job, probably chapter 7 is the most misunderstood and therefore the mis most misapplied chapter, certainly in the New Testament. So let's read it and see if we can succeed. Because if you can read, you can succeed. And I pray the Holy Spirit really helps you tonight because if you get stuck as a born-again believer in Romans chapter 7, you begin to make lame excuses to, to quit, to give up, and to not live unstoppable. You'll stop yourself. You ready? Do you, do you not know? Now, how, what's another way we could say that? Do you not know? Don't you know? <laughs> Don't you know? Do you not know? Let's see another translation here. Let's try the, uh, we'd better not do that one. The YLT, are, are you ignorant? Excuse me. Get us another translation. Are you ignorant? Well, it doesn't say you, okay? I've added that. It actually, are ye ignorant? Look at the person beside us and say, where are ye? <laughs> How about the Darby translation? Darby. I know Bill Darby. He's a good friend of mine, but this is a different one. Darby. <sighs> we better not do that one. He says, are you ignorant? The new living. That ought to be good because I like living. Now, brothers and sisters, you who are familiar with the law, don't you know? I think that's what I said. Don't you know? All right. Let's try another one. You want to? NIV. Well, where do I got that? H, the Holman. Let's look at the Holman. Since I'm speaking to those who understand the law... Are you unaware that the law has authority over someone as long as, are you aware? That's better than are you ignorant. Julie, are you ignorant? Or are you just unaware? I'm just unaware. <laughs> are you just unaware? Don't you know? Look at the person beside you and say, don't you know? <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go across the ocean. You ready? UK, okay? UK, okay? Don't you know? Australia, don't you know? That was a pitiful. That was actually an Arkansan doing a Brit doing an Australian. That's, that's more than what you paid for, I promise you that. The English version says, or do you not know? So he's laid out the premise because remember in chapter 6, he says, knowing this. That's the premise of chapter 7. The problem, again, if, 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 you've, if you don't realize, the, the chapters are only there to divide the book up, the whole letter up, for study purposes. When it starts chapter 7, chapter 7 is not the, the beginning of a new thought. It's the continuation of chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. For I am speaking to those who know the law. So who's he talking to, Raj? Who's he, who's he speaking to? Jews who know the law. All right. So are Christians under the law? Born-again believers, are you under the law? So don't you know? He is not talking to ye. He's explaining it. Explaining it. E-S-P-L-A-N-E. -E. Explaining. In. I left the end off. I can't spell explain it. It's not a word. Know you not, brethren. Now, he's speaking to believers 
are people who are acquainted with the law. And he's explaining it. And it goes to wonderful uh, links to make it simple. For I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he lives. <sighs> then why aren't Christians under the law? Romans 6. Because we died. We died in Christ. That's why the law does not have control over us. That's why sin does not have control over us. Because we died. And in the death, we now get to share in the resurrection life of God, which is the law of grace in Christ Jesus. All right. So, for the woman which has a husband's bound by the law to her husband, so as long as he lives, but if the husband is dead, she's loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives, she's married to another, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband is dead, she's free from the law. So that she is not an adulteress, though she's married to another. Wherefore, my brethren, he's explaining the law and the relationship of a believer and those who once were born Jews under the law and how they can be free from the law. And here's the secret. And I don't know why Christians get stuck here, except it's easy to get stuck in judgment because we all know our own faults better than others do. They just point them out and we try to cover them up. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law. How? By the body of Christ. All right, let's stop. Let's, let's think a moment. Did Jesus die for the sins of the world? Is everybody going to heaven? No. So just because he gave his body in death, does not mean everybody's saved. That's universalism. That's not biblical. Ain't nowhere that is biblical. Sure feels good and sure sounds good. Sure builds a lot of bridges. But Jesus wasn't a bridge. He's the door. He's the way. You also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Well, then you've got to get in the body of Christ. How do you get in the body of Christ? You can't join the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a living being. He's the head, we're his body. He's a living being. The church is a living being. We're called the body of Christ. Everybody still with me? So, wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another. Well, who are we married to? We're married to Jesus. In this, in this illustration, we're married to another. The Jew was in covenant with God, and the law was given, and then in order to get out from under the law, you had to die so you could be married to Christ. Even to him who is raised from the dead. Well, wouldn't you like to just talk about that for a minute? Muhammad raised from the dead? Hmm. Buddha? Hmm. You want to name any other religious leader? Any other prophet? Moses? Jesus. Christ alone. Raised from the dead. Tell me we don't have faith? Oh, my goodness. That you should be married to another, even to him, Jesus, who's raised from the dead. Verse number 5. For when we were in the flesh, well, wait a minute, when we were in the flesh. Now, how many of you do that right there? You got flesh? Come on, help me out over there. This participation sport. Help me out. Everybody got flesh? We got flesh. He's not talking about the physical body, he's talking about the flesh, sarks. We'll pop that up here in a minute, maybe talk about that. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Woo! But now we, who are, we, but now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of what? Spirit. Jesus walking along, he's with the guys, he's tired and he's hungry. That was very fascinating to me that Jesus was tired and hungry. And the guys go in to get some food. And Jesus meets the woman at the well. And you know that story and he tells her all about herself. She's with her 
uh, I don't know how many times, I forget, she'd been married five times, and the guy she's with, she's not married to. And uh, Jesus didn't condemn her, he just ministered love to her, ministered truth to her, that's who he is. And he speaks to her, and he says, woman, there's a time, you know, some of you worship here in this mountain, and the Jews, they go worship in the temple, but there will be a time when true worshipers worship how? In spirit. Listen, when he's talking about that, and I know I've been around spirit-filled folk, and I be one, but when we say worship in spirit, that doesn't mean you've got to run around a building, fall down on the floor, cackle like a chicken, run the room, jump a pew, do all kinds of wild stuff. And if you do all that, whatever. That's not, that's not what he's referring to here. God is a spirit. Those that worship him, worship him in spirit and truth. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes on some people and he manifests in power, listen, sometimes I laugh, sometimes I cry. Sometimes I get happy feet. Sometimes I don't even want to talk. I don't even want to move. I just want to be in his presence. So I don't know why we have to say, well, if you're filled with the Spirit, you'll clap like, you know, and throw you a fish. I don't know why if you're filled with the Spirit, you're going to do this or do that. Or some, oh, I'm not saying any of those things are wrong, but when that becomes the substitute for the Spirit himself, worship in Spirit is worship in the person and presence of God. Just because I come to the stage and say, all right, I want everybody to just lift your hands, and you go, does that mean you're worshiping in the Spirit? I don't know. What does that mean to you? Are you just following instruction? Are you worshiping from here? The heart of man is the candle of the Lord. It's the heart, the spirit of man, not your blood pumper. So, for we, we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth the fruit of death. But now we're delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that being dead wherein we were held. What's he saying? He's saying the law will kill you. Kill you. I don't know if that's in the Bible, kill you. That's an Arkansas word. In the military, we took hand-to-hand -hand combat, and we said, kill ya! Any, any military guys in here? And you did the... You I got it going on, boy. I'll tell you right now. I got a brown belt. That means kill. We were held in death. The letter killeth. But wait a minute. Does that mean since the letter killeth and we're in grace, we can just do whatever and just slap a little blood on it? Just take a little blood of Jesus and say, there you go. No. Because we're dead. The blood's already covered it all and washed it all away, and now we've been born again. But see, the law kills him. With these people, these Roman 7 people he's talking to and explaining how this law works, you understand the law. The law will kill you. The law will kill you. And he's going to explain to us why it kills us and how we can't get out of it without dying. And he says, "For uh, but now we are delivered. Whoa! Excuse me. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. Does that mean the, the law was bad? He, he talks about that. Does that mean Jesus said, because they attacked him, he said, I have not come to destroy the law. You understand what Jesus did? He didn't come to destroy the law. The law is perfect. The law is good. The law served a purpose. Galatians says he's a school teacher. But we should serve in newness of spirit. Because if you try to serve God without a newness of heart, it's impossible. And let me just go a step further. As I traveled and did marriage seminars... I told every person I ever spoke to that unless you have personally experienced the agape love of God, the love of God that loves you, period, regardless of you, you can never love your spouse the way you should, the way God wants you to. Ephesians 5, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Impossible unless you've been loved by Christ and experienced the love of Christ that's shed abroad in your heart. You can't. It's impossible. You can't have the agape love of God because that's the God kind of love. You can't have the God kind of love if you don't have God. It's real simple. But you got God? Anybody got milk? 
I got God. All right, so, but now we're delivered from the law, being dead that in that death that we were held in, and now we're going to serve not in this oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. No. I had not even known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law. And the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. And by, but sin taken occasion by that very commandment wrought in me all manners of concuptious. I can't even say that one. Anybody been to school? Conc- that word. Look at the person beside you and say that word. Well, let's look at that word. Let's just do a little study here and find out what that word means. You don't mind if we study the Bible, do you? Desire. Why don't you just say that? Brought me all kinds of <laughs> desire. Craving. Everybody say pecan pie. Nana pudding. Wrought in me all kinds of cravings. You know, growing up in the country, I heard my daddy say one time, he said, you know, there's nothing sweeter than a stolen watermelon. <laughs> it's actually scripture about that. That explains all kind of concupiscence. <laughs> cravings. Longings, desire for what is forbidden. Did God really say? Did you not know that if you eat of that fruit, you'll be like God? Oh, God said, you can eat of any tree in the garden, but don't eat of that one. Trust me. Have faith in me. Did God really say? For God surely knows the day that you eat of that Eve says, well, we're not even supposed to touch it. God never said that. Somewhere along the line, Adam and Eve got it all messed up. Lust. Wrought in me all manner of desire and cravings, for while at the law, sin was dead. See, because he that knows to do good, he that knows to do good and doesn't do it, it's sin. Whatever's not a faith is sin. Woo! That's pretty serious, isn't it? That means when we're in doubt and unbelief, the Bible says in Hebrews that we should not allow this evil heart of unbelief to be in us. Don't let there be found in you an evil heart or a sinful heart of unbelief. So don't discount the grace of God working in your life. Quit looking at you and keep your eyes on Jesus and you'll stay on top of the water and Jesus himself will either walk you to the boat or he himself will immerse you in his holy presence. Hi, this is Perry Black, and I want to let all of our viewers know that all of my messages are free, and you can download those at familychurchbryant.org, and I'll see you next week right here on VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection.